was a wretch. I remember who I was. I was lost. I was blind. I was running out of time. Sin separated. The breach was far too wide. But from the far side of the chasm, you held me in your side. So you made a way across the great divide. You left behind heaven's throne to build it here inside. And there on the cross, you paid the debt I owed. Freed my soul, broke my chains for the first time I had hoped. Hope. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood applied. Thank you, Jesus, it has washed me wide. Thank you, Jesus, you have changed my life and brought me from the darkness into glorious light. So you took my place, you laid inside my tomb of sin. You were buried for three days, and then you walked right out again. And now death has no sting, and my life has no end. For I have been transformed by the blood of the Lamb. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood applied. Thank you, Jesus, it has washed me wide. Thank you, Jesus, you have changed my life and brought me from the darkness into glorious light. Glory to his name. Oh, glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. Oh, glory to his name. Glory to his name. Oh, there to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. So you took my place, you laid inside my tomb of sin. You were buried for three days, and then you walked right out again. And now death has no sting, and my life has no end. For I have been transformed by the blood of the Lamb. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood applied. Thank you, Jesus, it has washed me wide. Thank you, Jesus, you have changed my life and brought me from the darkness into glorious light.
blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. He's been my force man in the fire, time after time. Born of his spirit and washed in his blood. What he did for me on Calvary was more than enough. Cause I trust in God, my Savior, the one who will never fail. He will never fail. submission all is at rest and I know the author of tomorrow has ordered my steps so this is my story and this is my song Oh, I'm praising my risen King and Savior all the day long. Oh, I trust in God, my Savior, the one who will never fail. He will never fail. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. That's why I trust him. That's why I trust in God, my Savior, the one who will never fail. Never fail. Oh, I sought the Lord, and He heard, and He answered. I sought the Lord, and He heard, and He answered. I sought the Lord, and He heard, and He answered. That's why I trust Him. That's why I trust in God, my Savior, the one who will never fail. He will never fail. I sought the Lord. And he heard, and he answered. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. That's why I trust him. That's why I trust in God, my Savior, the one who will never fail. Never As the song starts, he's been my fourth man in the fire time and time again. And I've said it many times and I'll say it again to you. I never did read where the three Hebrew children ever seen the fourth man. 
but Nebuchadnezzar did. And I've been around y'all a long time now. And I've seen some of you go through some pretty hot fires. And I could tell by the way you was looking, you never seen the fourth man. But I could. <laughs> but I could. You'd have never made it if it had not been for the Lord, which was on our side. You are to bless Him because He met with you in the fire. Sometimes we're like Job and wonder where He's at, but He's there. He said, I won't never leave you and I won't never forsake you. The song says, I trust in you, Lord. Do you trust Him tonight? Oh, I love Him. I appreciate Him. Appreciate the attitude and the atmosphere of worship and what I feel tonight. And uh, sometimes I don't know what to do. Sometimes I don't know which direction to go. Maybe somebody got something you need to do or say tonight. Oh, I love you, Jesus. Hmm. Yes, I feel like kind of the way the, the service is going and the spirit that I feel that I might need to just give you what God's given me. Is that okay? Luke chapter number 5, Luke chapter number 5. Oh, I love the Lord. I heard Johnny already quote it while we were, he was opening up. It's, it's, a, it's a pleasure to be in a family that's got a father that is a very present help in trouble. I'm thankful to be in this family tonight, and I'm glad I'm a part of this royal priesthood. Verse number 1 of Luke chapter number 5, And it came to pass that as the people pressed Upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep, and let down your nets for a draught. Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all night, all the night, and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. And when they had, when, when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes, and their net brake. And they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship, and they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships so that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it. He fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he was astonished, and all that were with him at the draught of the fishes which they had taken. And so he, and so was also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. And when they had brought their ships to land, they forsook all and followed him. That's all that I'll read, and I don't know. Amen. The Lord been dealing with me all day long on these scriptures, and I've had a lot that will go through my mind, and I really don't know. Amen. What all I'm going to say or where I'm going to stop. And, uh, but there's a lot of messages that are in this. There's, and uh, and I, just, I just feel a, a need tonight to try to just encourage your faith a little bit tonight.
and uh, let you know, I don't know what, I don't know that I've got a, 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 a I guess you could say a text tonight or a title uh, for what that I feel like the Lord would have me to bring tonight. But here, uh, where that I read to you in the Word of God, Jesus now is in his ministry and uh, Jesus is teaching all these people here and they're following him. Now, uh, there's a lot of these people as we'll find out later in the scripture that are just following Jesus for the loaves and the fishes, the things that they can get out, amen, of what he's handing out and uh, the miracles that he's doing. And that might I add, I do love to see the miracles, amen, that Jesus is uh, that can give and has given. You might as well be honest, amen. Jesus has done a whole lot for you that you probably uh, don't deserve. Now, uh, we're Gentiles just common, amen, cut off from the commonwealth of Israel, amen, having no hope, amen, but Jesus grafted us in, amen, on Calvary. I'm thankful tonight, amen, that for that we was that lost sheep that Jesus came out, amen, and grafted us in to a live olive branch, and now, amen, he counts us as one of his children, amen, and I'm thankful tonight to know uh, that I'm on the winning inside and I'm in his family amen I know that I'm not uh, worthy of what he's done for me amen and we if you'll just stop just a minute everything that you have uh, regardless of what or how much that it is amen if you'll just stop and realize uh, where that come from we can get a whole lot further in God uh, because I know David said I look unto the hills from which cometh my help uh, my help cometh from the Lord I'm glad tonight hallelujah amen that what I've got uh, Jesus gave unto me uh, somebody said uh, I've worked for everything I've got and we need to uh, but I'm thankful that God give me the ability uh, to get out of the bed this morning amen and give me the ability to put one foot in front of the other amen I'm thankful the Bible tells us that a man uh, that won't work he shouldn't eat amen I believe in all of that amen but I want to say at the end of our road amen Saul Solomon said it's all vanity of vanities amen but you know the only thing uh, that really matters is when uh, we get down to the end of the road amen and we've got Jesus living on the inside amen I've seen the death of the righteous and I've seen the death of the sinner and I want to say when I get to my last day I want to make sure by the Homer Williams uh, that there's a savior uh, living on the inside of me amen I groan to be clothed uh, with that heavenly kingdom amen how many say I'm ready uh, to see what he's got waiting on me over there hallelujah I said I'm ready uh, to see what hey look at the news hey, you ain't got to look very far uh, to see we're winding her up and I said I believe we're on the last mile hey, amen if you're going to live for Jesus you better do her now I'm glad I'm a Christian now uh, greater than I've ever been hey, amen I'm saying I believe and the coming of the Savior is just at the opening of the door uh, just any day now our Lord is coming I want to stop here a minute and say thank you Lord for what I've got in this world but greater than all of that if a man gained the whole world and then lose his soul uh, what would he give in exchange I'm glad I've got Jesus on the inside and that's all that matters I said that's all that matters the world says you're crazy amen you ain't got anything but they're wrong I got Jesus living on the inside amen Jesus amen was a preaching in his ministry Hey man, here he is. He comes down to the uh, to the edge of this lake, Genesaret. And I don't know how far I'm going to get tonight, but I feel like I'm going to get to somebody tonight uh, here pretty soon. Hey man, it's been a it's been a dealing in my spirit uh, pretty hard today. Uh, Jesus comes down there now. Hey Amen. And he wants to use one of these ships for a pulpit. And uh, there's some things that goes on right here. Hey Amen that I feel like hey Amen is particularly pertains to Dale if it pertains to nobody else. Amen. Now he looks here Brother David. Amen. And here's some men that fished for a living. And they had fished all night long. Amen. Now if you ain't never fished all night I'm not going to fish all night long and catch nothing. My wife likes catching fish but she don't like to fish. 
Amen. As long as the lake one time had some of them little old blonde crickets and she was sitting back in Brother Johnny's boat and she had a fishing pole. I had one of them little old round things of crickets about like that. And as fast as I could put that cricket on there, she literally didn't even act one bit excited. She'd literally just lay the pole over the side and just pick it right back up, turn it right around there to me. I'd take the fish off, throw it in, get another cricket. She'd lean it right over the side, put it right down, and catch another. Amen. I thought as fast as I could bait them, she was catching them. But as quick as they quit biting, she's tired of fishing. Amen. I want to say tonight, these old boys had told all night long. Hey, I said all night long. And about that time that when Jesus walked down at the point to where they'd given up, because it's evident that we're not going to do any good, that's when Jesus come. Amen. I said we're going to change gear and do it a little different way. Amen. I want to say tonight, amen, there ain't nothing wrong with having a form and a fashion. Amen. You got to have some kind of form. Amen. Or just be blowed out of proportion. Amen. But I, we don't have to have nothing. Amen. With something rode on it. We know what we're going to do anyway. Oh, but I want to say hallelujah. Holy Spirit, would you please, would you please, amen, come and change that up in our services. Amen. Lord God, would you move in our meeting and let us know, amen, I know sometimes, amen, we toil and we toil and we toil, amen, them boys were trying, they weren't just fooling around, that's what they did to make a living, oh, but they hadn't caught anything, I want to ask you tonight, now you got to be honest with me, and I'll be honest with you, there's times that I feel, Brother Johnny, I try to read, I try to pray, I try to study, I preach revivals, I come to this church, amen, I call the sick, I do everything I can do. I try to live right. I try to fast. But let's be honest. Amen. Sometimes I feel like I don't get anything anywhere. Are you with me tonight? Amen. There's times in my life I feel like I'm doing everything I can do, but I'm still coming up empty. I said I'm still coming up empty. Am I talking to anybody? We'll blame it on the news. We'll blame it on the church and the preacher. But the fact of the matter is, amen, you ain't going to catch them all night, every night. There's times you've got to walk by faith and Jesus wants to know if you'll just listen to his word. Amen. I'm told all night long and they were washing their nets. Now that struck me funny. Why would you wash something that is washed while you're using it? They, t- they ain't even had no fish smell on this. They've drug it through the water all night long and ain't got no, but they're washing them. It's because they fished right on the edge. And they had push rods that push yourself along through the night. They drag them nets through the mud and then try to get them fish. Now I want to say here, amen, sometimes we're in too much control when it comes to our life and when it comes to worshiping the Lord. Amen. We, we worry too much about what somebody else may think. Amen. I pray to God, amen, that even after God answers your prayer, that you don't forget, amen, what God's done for you and you'll continue to walk around the, sur- the church ever service. Amen. There's times, amen, that I wonder, Lord, where are you? Amen. Where are you? Where are you? Amen. We're dry- we've got control of the service. Amen. But you know, every once in a while, Brother Johnny, we need to lose sight of ourselves. Hallelujah. You say, are you preaching a Holy Ghost? I really am. Amen. What is it? What's church without it? Amen. We need to forget who's standing beside you. And we need to worship God for who he is. It don't make no difference what you think about me. David danced before the Lord. And they made fun of him. Amen. But it didn't matter to him. The ark was a coming back into town. Hallelujah. I want to say tonight, I don't care who's here. If the president came, I'd probably preach harder than I'm preaching now. Amen. But you know what? Jesus Christ saved me. Amen. From a pit of sin. Turned me around. I was on my way to hell every once in a while. Amen. You need to forget about what you've done today or what you're going to do tomorrow. Amen. Right now is the day of salvation. Let's worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen. 
don't give up. They'd give up. They'd quit. I'm talking to somebody right here. Don't quit. I'm not saying you're going to quit church and never come back. But we get so discouraged in praying for certain things until we quit. We start washing our nets. We're done. We're done. But Jesus wanted to use their vessel. Do you mind if I use your vessel? Do you mind? Well, if you don't mind, I've got news for you. It's going to be out of what you normally do. Come on now, talk to me. When Jesus got on the boat, everything changed. Amen. Who do you think you are? I've done, my daddy was a fisherman. This is what we've always done. And you're coming out here preaching, amen, and get on my boat and tell me how that I need to fish. I probably fished all night long. Hey, they, he wanted to use their vessel, Brother Johnny. Amen, I'm getting ahead of myself right here. He wanted to use his vessel to minister off of. They were down in the water, had done vacated it, and said, I'm done. I'm washing these things, and I'm going to the house. Forget it all. Amen. I ain't going to catch anything, and you might as well forget it. But Jesus said, amen, come on on here, Simon. Amen. He taught them there a little bit and used his vessel. Can I tell you, it don't make no difference where you work or what you do. Jesus wants to use your vessel that a minister out of. Amen. I say we're all. We're all ministers. Your name probably ain't no no church sign nowhere. Amen. Just because mine is don't mean I'm any different than you are. It's just a calling for this building. But when you go out to them buildings, every day you go to work, every day you go wherever you're at, amen, whatever's living on the inside is going to be ministering on the outside. If the only time you worship God is here, I say you probably ain't got the God I've got. When you go to work, Jesus is still. Amen. When you go down yonder, amen, to the schoolhouse, young people, Jesus is still real. He needs a vessel that he can minister out of. Amen. How many people have we talked about deer hunting to today versus how many people have we talked about Jesus? I talked to a boy today, and I'm not bragging on myself. I'm just going to tell you. At all times, Albert, Jesus needs to use your vessel, if you don't mind, to minister out of. Boy, he called me, and I was very frustrated. I didn't have too good a day, and I'm not going into all that. But I was struggling. Y'all ever struggle? I was struggling, and I was talking to people that I talk to all the time that own businesses and inspectors and people that run concrete plants and all that. But in the middle of all my frustration, I heard that young man say, where do your pastor at? And I said, I'm going to be out of town next week. I needed some concrete today and there's a lot of things didn't didn't happen like I wanted it to. And so I'm going to be gone next week preaching. And those of you that's ever dug a ditch and worried about rain knows what I'm talking about. Bottom's all pretty, great stakes, ready to put concrete in, and now I can't put it in. A week later, four or five inches of rain. Carry a rock with you to beat the shovel on. Me and Johnny before has dug a hole and put a sump pump in and pumped water for hours just to try to get our job done. And my frustration level was real high. And I said, I'm not going to be here next week. I've got a revival out of town. And all of a sudden, Jesus said, I need to use your vessel just a minute. <laughs> and all of a sudden, all that other stuff, it matters. But it took a back burner real quick. And he started asking me. He said, me and my family's out of church. Where do you go to church? Where do you pastor? And he started asking. And I started trying to draw him in, Brother Keith, because his soul is worth more to me than any of that stuff. 
you've got to be real careful when you're out children in the world. That's when Jesus needs your vessel. That's when you get discouraged. When you're over there in Western all by yourself, uh, sweeping them floors and them women are cussing every breath and you see all that ungodly garbage everywhere and the devil says, give in, give in, give in, give in and it seems like you're the only one there. Hallelujah. But that's when he needs your vessel. That's when he needs your vessel. Whenever the world says quit, whenever the world says give up, whenever the world says give in, hallelujah, when the world looks at you, Scotty, and said, I'd cry, I wouldn't trust in a God that's done what he's done to me. He needs your vessel. Amen. He needs you to stand up and say, hey, let me tell you what the Lord has done for me. Hallelujah. These things that happen in our life, it's just because nature is nature. But God has never done nothing but good to me. He's been so good to me. He saved me. He changed me. He's made bills for me. He's answered prayers for me. Hallelujah. He's been everything I ever dreamed of and a whole lot more. He needs your vessel. So don't let him down. Amen. He needs you. He needs you. He needs you. You still work at the daycare? I thought you did. I met you though this morning in town. She works at a daycare where there's mamas and daddies that brings them babies and delivers them to you that don't know one thing about God. Not one thing. There's a boy come to look at a job yesterday. He runs a he runs a crane outfit. He's coming over here to look about setting some houses where I was working. And uh, he got to talking to me, asking me about revivals and stuff where I was preaching at. And uh, he said, my wife is a hospice nurse. And uh, said that she's dealing with a man now that's 103 years old. That's an atheist. He says he don't, don't believe in God. My, I said, my wife, I tried to talk to him about Jesus. And he said, I don't want anything to do with your God. Don't even talk to me about that. But you know what she done? God said, I want to use your vessel a minute. I may get hung up right here, but if I do... Hey man, we're going to shout the whole way, or at least I am. Hey man, you know what? She looked back at that man, Brother Johnny, and said, Well, all I'm going to do is just show you the love of Jesus, and the rest is up to you. Hallelujah. Can I say the love of Jesus? Oh, it suffereth long. I said it suffereth long. Hey man, this love, L O V E, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. God needed a vessel that he could work through, so he searched heaven and the earth and beneath the earth and his only begotten son said I'll be the vessel that'll hang between the heavens and the earth Whoa, hallelujah I want to say thank you Jesus for taking my sin and taking my shame and nailing it to the cross hallelujah I'm glad that Jesus did it all for me I could have called 12 legions of angels amen I could have so he was at the point to where he could have given up too. Amen. All them people walked away. And now the 12 that he had, they walked away. And he's treading the wine press alone. All by himself. Amen. Is there any use in it? Here I stand on the brink of grace and law. And I'm the binder in the catalog. Is there any use in going on? Nobody cares. But I believe you looked down through the eons of time, Randy. And he saw you over yonder in that craggy prison. And he said, if I don't go up that hill, he'll never have a chance. He'll never get out of that jail. Hallelujah. If I don't go, that little old boy that's a dope addict, he'll never make it to Hot Creek on that carport. Joe Larkin, I believe he said, if I don't go, amen, there'll never be an appointment in Henson Cove, North Carolina. Amen. So I believe he said, I'll just stay right here. Amen. For God came into the world to save sinners. And Paul said of who? I am the chiefest. And she glad tonight. It don't matter how good you are, how bad you was. Jesus is still the remedy. Amen. He said, I'm going to go away, but I'm going to send the comforter. He said, I'm the light of the way. I am the light. I'm going to go away. Now, you're the light. So be careful that you're a good vessel when it comes time to minister to whomever it is God puts you with. The people that you're around is your mission field. Sometimes if we ain't real careful, 
I don't want to get hung up. I want to go on in a minute. Sometimes we feel like when we put our change in these buckets that we've paid our dues for our mission field. We've wiped our hands and say, let somebody else do it. Thank God for them that go to foreign soil. I appreciate them. But you've got a mission field. Well, you've got a mission field. And there's times that we get weary, and you might as well admit it. You fold your nets up and go home. But it's time to get back to work. All right, Jesus said, he's done with his, he's done with his congregation now. And he's used, this, he's used this vessel, and now he's going to get very personal. And I want you to, I want you to know, notice something right here. God used what he had. He didn't say, Brother Jim, run down there real quick to Lowe's and buy this or go over there. That car you've got ain't good enough. Go over at Taylor's and get you a nut and finance it for 42 years, and then you'll be ready. They're so high now, you about got to finance them that long. But he said, we'll just use this. So if you ain't real careful, sometimes you'll look over yonder and you'll look over yonder. And if I had what he's got, man, I could do so much. If I had the life he's got, I could minister like that. No, 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 no. God's going to use what you've got if you'll let him. Amen. It don't matter what model of car it is. He can make it run a million miles if he needs it to. Amen. It don't matter. I'm thankful for the house that I live in. Amen. I said I'm thankful for the house that I live in. And may Lord be more than me praising the Lord. Amen. It don't make no difference if it's 5,000 square feet. Amen. Or it's a single wide trailer. Or it's a tent over on the hill. If Jesus gave it to you, you need to be thankful for it. I said you need to be thankful for it. Amen. And know that it came from the Lord. And praise Him. And get your eyes off of everybody else. And say, God, what I've got, use it. And that's all it matters. Amen. Isaiah said here am I Lord. Send me. Amen. I want to say don't worry about what you ain't got. Just let God use what you do have. Amen. Now he's going to get personal. And he's going to use his business, what he does for a living, to prove how God can work. Launch out a little. He just got out a little to preach. But then we come to show a true, true miracle, launch out into the deep. Now, when we get out in the deep, Joe, we're going to be away from everybody else. It's just going to be me and you. Now we're going to do something you don't ever do. wonder what that would be. I remember, Brother Johnny, I don't remember if Michael was pastoring yet or not. I think Brother Johnny was still pastoring. I was seeking the Lord. I knew God was calling me to preach, and I didn't want to. I wanted to be satisfied in leading singing. I wanted God to touch me and anoint me. One Sunday morning, he said, crawl all the way through the church to the front. Well, that ain't no problem until it come time. He was trying to push me out a little in the deep. You see, he can't trust you with power until you can give up your vessel. I want to do it my way. Jesus is like, if we're going to catch fish, we're going to fish like I fish. You've got to listen to me. You know how I know that they just done what they did to pacify Jesus? Jesus said, let's go out in the deep. He said, let your nets with an S down for a drought. And they kept on arguing. We've told all night. But nevertheless, at your word, we'll let down the net. No S. Are you giving all? Come on, talk to me. When God asks you to do something, it's almost like we expect the check before we do the work. We want God to show us He can before we prove to Him we will. But that ain't got nothing to do with it. You're looking at a fellow that couldn't give a book report without crying. I'd take a zero, no questions asked, before I get up in front of the class. God called me to preach, and I said, you're crazy. There ain't no way. 
but God will use you just like you are. So he let down the net. And the Bible said they engulfed a great multitude of fish. God used the business that they had that was failing to prove to them, if you'll just listen, I can make it prosper in ways that you've never imagined. We've got prime examples in the building. Brother Joe beats himself up all the time. I don't think I'm good enough. Is that okay if I use this testimony? He says it all the time. I might as well. <coughs> he counts to 12. Squiggling night crawlers. Puts them in a box. Puts a lid on them. Puts them in a box. Puts them in a the cooler. Counts to 12 again. Puts some dirt in it. Puts a lid on it. He said, I don't feel like I'm nothing. I count to 12 is all I do. Uh, what's that song y'all made up? My kids sing that. Kimmy don't got my kids to sing it. I'm just a worm man. Riding in the van. Be careful that you don't criticize God when he's making your business prosper if you'll just listen to his word. And when they pulled that net, there was more fish than they could haul. So I want to ask you, let's just stop right here. You look down the road, you see a man with a lot. But then if we ain't real careful, we'll forget that God put us a handful when we didn't deserve it. <laughs>